Hello everyone, this is Ethan Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. As you can see, somehow, somewhere, we did make it. And so we're staying in vaults. Unfortunately, a bit shy of tier 39. At the end of the day, I only care that we made tier 38 because this week was pretty rough for us. Of course, no bonus offense or defense mythic. And we had Medius. Legendary Lilna and Uller bonus. Uller is more for people using her against our defense, but it's time to look at our replays. I'm not sure I'm gonna go about talking about things that went down this week because some of the explanations are gonna be relatively long, but for most of our offense matches this week, pretty straightforward. Even if there was Medius, Medius, it happened to be that their units... It didn't matter if we had Bolt Tower damage or not, and of course Bolt Tower is now level 9, so we can get a maximum of 50 chip damage, which is absolutely insane. Super powerful. But one of the biggest issues for us this week, of course, this Medius bonus, just because that plus 10 HP makes him so much more tankier with his damage reduction. And of course the plus 4 to all stats as well. And then of course Legendary Lilna bonus, who we're using this week to goofball. So, we have it set up to where Legendary Lilna can feasibly chase down folks who don't run away far enough. And so, he's going to take out Grave Hector. <laughs> Totally not canon. Um, but there was a couple of offense matches this week that were pretty difficult. Unfortunately, did not record either of them. The last match was the hardest match of the season for sure. We ended up sacking a unit there, and we'll talk about that a bit more in the next replay. So that particular matchup, we were up against and Ascend to the Thune, so already a massive, with far save, so already a massive problem for our team. There's a duo Krom, of course Medius, so no chip damage for us. Harmonized Catria. Uh, who else was there? There was a Knot. Dancer Bertrude. And who am I forgetting? <laughs> I'm always forgetting someone. Um... So let's start over. Cannot attack. So there is Duo Krom, Ascended the Thune, Dancer Recoup, Medius, Harmonized Catria, Not. Who's the last one? I'm trying to remember. Oh, Legendary Male Violet. There we go. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't remember him because he kind of just got obliterated, but. That one is incredibly difficult just because we didn't have very many options to take out their units because of the far save descended of the Thune. Of course she's going to tank our entire team easily Guide my arrow, because of course with Wily Fighter, Nino's Blade Tum going into her is that initiating into a Thunder of Thune is just not going to work. No field buffs to work with, unfortunately. So. As a result, we ended up making a play where we sacked. We ended up sacking Caden. I don't think it was the optimal play, but it worked out in the end. We ended up not even picking up the or anything. We took all eight turns, because of course we have Noah's turn wheel for the extra turn. Because we goofballed and mistapped a couple times and did a few miscalculations, so kind of awkward. But essentially what it came down to was a ton of AI manipulation, trying to force their duo Krom to use the change fate to fling Ascended Athune backwards so that we could actually use our ranged units to pick up kills because it was also an infantry pulse team. So the Medius had turn one iceberg, the Knot had one cooldown miracle, which didn't matter because we had guard support in the form of Caden, we also had air of guard, or we could just one shot Knot with Nino straight up. So, not too big of a problem there. But of course, there's Deadeye on Duo Krom, and of 
course, legendary male battle with Sublime Heaven. Overall, just not great for us to be up against such a team, but this is the classic memory. We get the drawback from Luna, which also procs sla slag? Huh? Defense rest slag. <laughs> We're not, we're not playing modded Minecraft here, um, remains. but most of the time defense res snag doesn't matter, it's just that sabotage res is never really going off anyways, so might as well do something that could do something in the RG slot, but that's about it for this match. So it basically became that and then just slowly better picking accepted. off their units. Ash definitely super useful for meleeing some of the ranged units. Of course, for a while, Ascend of the Thune was a problem. And it was on the... I think it's the Dolpo... Dolpo... I <laughs> can't speak. Ether Rage defense map. It's the darker... I will theme. never yield! map with the two my defense tiles on the third row centered like where Nils is and to the right of Nils right now it was that map so we were running into we ran into an issue because we, were, we kind of screwed up our plays <laughs> to where we were left with Ascended of Thune and Medius left and so my plan was to separate the two so I could just take out Medius using Nino and Air I also charged up here's Iceberg to do some extra damage, but uh, yeah, we kind of screwed it up. And because Ascended of Thune had no assist and Medius had swap, of Thune would move first and then Medius would swap a lot of times. So we had to manipulate the AI to fix our problem, separate the two, and then we were able to take them out separately, which was nice. So we didn't time out and lose. That's really the thing that makes our Ether Raids offense challenge shenanigans so difficult is that usually, especially when we don't have a bonus unit like this season, or we aren't running when we have the bonus units, we just aren't running them, we end up with the problem where we just can't feasibly lose a match entirely. And so if we get absolutely counterpicked by a team, we have to try to be able to win. Which is definitely challenging. I'm not entirely sure why they decided to activate the gold trap here, but that's just free damage for us, so it's just GG. Especially since Ascended Bjorn doesn't even have his special up, so that's just a death sentence. Pretty straightforward for Luna there. But that match went about as well as I thought it could. It probably could have gone deathless if we really knew what we were doing and actually bothered to put in a bit more time. I put in about 45 minutes into that match, which, you know, compared to our average shenanigans is pretty long, but considering some of the other times previously where I did tons of damage counts and AI shenanigans where it took multiple hours to do a match, it's not bad. But uh, the most notable match this season was a perfect match from us against a particular team that will explain the next replay. So this was towards the end of the season. We were up against a team with Duo Krom, Duo Dagger, Knot, Duo Peony, Legendary Sigurd, Legendary Lilna, and Medius. I believe that is seven units. <laughs> I'm not counting. Um, basically, a lot of difficulties for us. Of course, Legendary Sigurd is damage reduction, Holy Knight Aura. Super, anno super annoying. And of course, Legendary Lilina bonus. We were super fortunate that Legendary Lilina bonus didn't bite us in the back during that offense match because. Their particular legendary oh, loon was only plus one, not plus ten. So it turns out that she could not run around KO air with gifted magic. Which was definitely nice. Of course they had the usual attack opening buff on Legendary Lilina. So nothing we could do there, but at least we had sabotage attack again. 
So, unfortunately, there's not really much I can explain on the respect of, uh... Explain on the respect of the overall match planning, but we ended up spending about an hour and a half for that match. Only because, for the longest time, I was thinking to myself, how am I going to take out Legendary Sigurd? Because, of course, especially with Crusader's Ward in his B slot, it's extremely hard for our ranged units to take him out. And we also don't want to player phase into him with melee units, because while we could do that, the problem is they have a bunch of ranged units and duo dagger not, and of course, duo crom. So we don't want to mess with. <laughs> Don't want to mess with range unit mobility and us trying to nail no well units. Strength. So it took me forever to realize that. Wait a second, we're baiting with air, which means air is going to be below 75% HP, and that means hallowed tear thing. Um, let's say Sigurd doesn't even proc, so he doesn't have the 40% damage reduction initially, which is more than enough for us to. <laughs> pick up the kill there, because you can get a pretty large attack stat on air post-remix, which is super nice. Man, before a remix, her attack stat was abysmal, but yeah, we're able to capitalize on that. So, I set up a play where I forced, prevented dual Chrome from doing anything crazy. And whatnot. I'm manipulating the AI as well so they're not would move to the left instead of down, which would have been bad for us. We would have gone air snipe down my legendary Sigurd potentially, or some, some other unit if we didn't play it correctly. And so that was because I knew the, the knot was after Peony, so we could manipulate the AI in that way. And so with that AI manipulation, we're able to then use air to take out their overextended legendary Sigurd, and then we just proceed to slowly pick off their units. Actually, I think it was Triandra instead of Dual Peony. It's probably Triandra. I don't. Well, well, let me count the units to make sure that was actually seven, so not. Duo Dagger, Duo Crom, Medius, Legendary Lona, Yeah, okay. It might have been Triandra, don't know. But speaking of don't know, it's been a while since I've seen Pulse Smoke and well, it's gonna work very well here. Especially since Fiona doesn't even get countered there. So it's just GG of course. No one here is going to beat Fiona without a special. We can do a good amount of damage, but that's about it. Won't get past me. Of course, we don't have for healing. We don't have Halo Smoke or anything. So, easy claps for the one the base tank. But that offense match was pretty insane. I wish I could have recorded it, but unfortunately not. Most of the time, again, was spent trying to figure Are out how ready? to deal with the fact we couldn't take out Legendary Sigurd, at least I thought I couldn't. Because otherwise, yeah, things would have gone really complicated because Legendary Sigurd's threat range is super large with his core movement as a melee cav. But at the end of the day, we did manage to realize that air was going to drop below 75%, so that was great. Great match. Other than that, most of the other offense matches was either Nino vantage killing stuff or hit and runs, picking off units. That's the that's pretty much our only viable option <laughs> for our offense team, which is definitely a problem. There's a certain combination of units that basically just spells GG for us. We just have to take unit sacks in certain situations. So of course, one of the biggest problems for us on offense is our hit and run is super weak. It's just to basically fling our unit in, get them to attack, and then dance and reposition out. That's super basic hit and run for dancer. And it doesn't work well. 
when the enemy team has super high mobility. So there's there's that for us to deal with. This particular team are quite interesting. Pretty much just dual leaf carry. They have tactic room up on Bramamon, which is nice for them. Allows them to break the structure with no problem. And they're just waiting for Bolt Tower here, of course. I'm with you. They want to deal with Zealoth accordingly. And the I most important yield. part here, of course, is Dual Leaf has his Miracle shenanigans, so he's able to do this. See if they fully clean up here, activating perhaps something good. Fear not, I'm with you. And well, pretty scatterbrained as usual. Playing Ether Raid's old brain dead is definitely quite interesting to say the least. I'm doing it for so long now, but it never gets old. You always miss something silly on occasion, but right behind uh, you. Going back to what I was talking about, hit and run. The problem with our the problem of not having a hit and run, strong hit and run option, is with you. that you run into the problem of oh, what am I going to do against these teams with save units? You have to tank, and well, you know it can tank all right, but being able to get those hit and runs off against those save teams is a huge boost because a lot of those teams are more reliant on having those save units to prevent hit and run from wrecking their team. So there's not really much we could do on that respect though to deal with super tanky save units. So that's always gonna be a problem with us on offense. But I gotta say, Kaden Refine, so good. <laughs> Literally just getting Cannon Baton is of course he could have gotten more, but of course the Intelligence system did want to make him an absolutely broken buffer, even though he's definitely a super strong buffer as is. Getting that guard on offense now is super nice. Ever since Air got guard on her remix, she's been a lot better because she doesn't have to deal with moon bows, for example, as much. On say dual lift, who well can't double her now because of lift your burns so fine. Being able to just outspeed dual lift during combat and therefore preventing follow up attack is absolutely insanely powerful. Definitely helps her out. And the guard's extra icing on the cake. And once again, we got the meme drawback shenanigans. So, unfortunately, for Legendary Mark, he's right in range for. AoE. Forgive me, so that's friends. not going to end well for him. But uh, pretty interestingly, when it about this way, I would have just done a hit and run with Yuri, to be honest. And then they have units you know, reposition, so you could just snipe down, you know, oops, dance with Peony. reposition out and all that stuff. But yeah, that's stuff you have to think about. And once again we have another Yuri and company. Pretty much if you have Yuri a dancer and someone with reposition, probably you should not be losing to this team most of the time. The only time you might have problems is against Selov, and that's about it. And again, Uller is bonus this week, so for folks who have Uller, it's just an easy solo check. It's one round proc Jedi, does not get to counter, so yeah, not great for us. Neo. But here they go for a snipe down on Bramon, and this is exactly what I was talking about. They can just leave like so. I wouldn't leave Sheeta there personally, but that's me. We go once once again we get the memory, but this time around not is not in position to catch down Harmonize Shida. I don't know Step if they aside. knew that was coming, but their general game plan was perfectly fine. So I approve of that at least. Do your and best. Myself, not yeah. Be for this game. yeah, plenty of Kanto. We don't have Kanto control, but uh 
I imagine if we had Kanto control, things wouldn't change too much because they would just go after the Kanto control unit. You don't really want your Kanto control unit being too far back because the range is quote unquote only for cases from, from the unit who's running it, but yeah, I don't know. And of course we're running infantry pulse on this team, so the C slot's already hard to come by for space. It would probably have to be like um, be careful in the water. legendary common. That'd be kind of weird. I definitely like time pulse on him just to accelerate Deadeye better. When he eventually gets his remix, I don't know, a couple of years from now at this rate, he'll probably I hope he gets something like dual crown where he can accelerate and stuff. Great. Then he would be in business. Better accept it. be a solid nuke for a while longer. But compared to his release, he's of course much weaker than he used to be relative to the other units. But if he has Deadeye up, he still picks up quite a ton of kills. And of course that's because his attack stats are pretty strong. Of course he's debuffing the foe's attack and defense with Ren Greaser as long as that they're at 100%. And uh, his effective damage, of course, so in those particular matchups, especially with Deadeye, he can rack up a ton of damage. But unfortunately, the problem for him is charging up a Deadeye because cooldown issues. Let's you go again. More meme up the usual shenanigans this time around we get the drawback this way and so easy claps to snipe down yuri legendary lilna bonus definitely pretty interesting Just i was thinking about trying to meme and make a defense for next season where legendary lilna has max attack max visible attack aka 99 just for the heck of it but I kind of don't want to do that because it's Altina and Lift bonus next week, so we can just plonk her way through. Speaking of next season though, I do think it will be pretty difficult going forward for our Astra offense, purely because our main strats tend to evolve around hit and run and then nuke everything afterwards. That's essentially all we have for options. <laughs> Just kind of a problem, but not sure what they're doing here. They're having Brave Hector go up against what a little no one's running near save. Sure. So, uh, kind of awkward because sure he manages to survive, but he's already lost most of his HP in the first combat, and we have ourselves legendary Crom with Dead Eye. He's doing 72 here, so uh, great. And while well, we have our usual AI potato memes, but already enough for us to get a win here. And with that, that is currently all our replays for this week. But again, going back to our Astro Season offense, with Kanto Control now inheritable and running around, I think we're just going to have a much harder time on offense because we definitely rely on Regan to snipe down units and whatnot and get that hit and run with Kanto 3, which is super strong on offense on a melee unit. So, we'll have to figure out what we're doing next season. Next season should be all right in terms of scoring because of course we have Altina, we have Lift, so we can merge Blanc, minus 20 max Lift loss deal. And uh, it's healing tower bonus, which will be nice for some extra healing, I guess. Although it's kind of not good for an Altina strat if we want to stay in vantage range, we have to keep her away from healing tower, so that'll be awkward. This week we have Jafar bonus. We do have a plus six Jafar from our unfortunate series of summoning events way back when. <laughs> uh, he was sharing focus on a banner with Takumi, which back then I wanted to pick up some close counter fodder, so. 
It was a pretty good value banner, but we ended up getting a ton of Jafars from that banner, so that's where most of our Jafars came from. But unfortunately, even with Water Blessing and Super Scoring shenanigans, we only score, I believe, 750 to 764. And I believe the cutoff this week is probably 3,880, maybe even higher. If it was higher, it'd just be 3,882, but... For sure, we're not going to be able to find 5, 764 for 3880, and even finding one of them would be extremely difficult, but pretty certain based on how 3860 is ranking right now that there's no way 3870 is staying, or even probably 3872, so we're not trying. It's a bit unfortunate because Legendary Lilna is bonus next week, and of course, by now, you've been watching long enough, also known as recently, <laughs> you would know that we do have a max plus 10 legendary Lilina, but I still haven't given her a 400 SP assist yet, so I should probably do that eventually. Arena Assault definitely getting more intense for top 1k in terms of competition for scoring. This uh, 5,352 is averaging about 760 a match. So of course, naturally, the cutoff's going to always keep rising as the months pass by, but getting to the point where we can't just do one run and call it a day, we actually have to care that, oh, we got a min roll match during our run, because that kind of stuff will give us low scores like this. And that's a problem if we want to keep up with top 1k. I do think this should be enough for top 1k, though because the ranks haven't dropped too much in about an, in an hour, so probably be staying there. Other than that, only other thing I want to bring up is Rogue Sieges. Of course, because of our new legendary heroes, we can pull off some broken shenanigans, and especially when the Roker are green units, legendary Nana with legend or harmonized Katria. Yeah. Just plotting things to death and getting Gale Force off. Doing quite a bit of damage. So much damage that we can win in three turns, which of course is terrible compared to people's one turn clears, but we don't have dual peonies and a bunch of shenanigans like that, so we have to go our budget ways. I say budget, but you know, all you need is a plus 10 legendary non forehead. <laughs> Anyways, we'll be back when the results drop in. And here we are. Way closer to reset than I would like. So we'll have to hurry fixing up our defenses and stuff, but healing to our bonus is whatever. I think this is what we're going with this week. It will be interesting but it is the merge plonk defense after all, so it'll be fine. <laughs> worst comes to worst, we lose like, I don't know, 100 plus lift. Just lose 20 lift every day. But Arena, we should be able to get back in super easily because we have Legendary Lilina, so that's not a problem. Wonder what the next bonus is after that we did make top 1k in green assaults as you can see our ranks didn't go down too far but uh, other than that roker sieges our world is pretty chill even though i'm rank 9 here you can see there's a lot of people <laughs> clustered between uh top and top 10 is pretty clustered Pretty dense, I should say, in terms of scoring. Shouldn't be too hard to make top three unless people start spamming runs, but our clears are super quick, so I'm pretty sure we can outpace them any any day of the week. But anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ethan Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!